I say to you every year that at the Feast of the Trinity, you run the risk of coming to church and having the preacher give a long talk on the mystery of the Trinity, talking a long time to explain something that he knows he cannot understand. No one can explain the Trinity. Not me, not the bishop, not the pope. Not even the seminary. Not even he can explain it. But the seminary can explain one thing, and that is this morning he and a number of other hardworking people logged about a thousand books from this building over to the gym to get ready for the block party. And looking at the books over there, they fall into basically four categories. Basically, cookbooks, people have to eat. History books, people like history, especially American history. Love stories. Oh my God, are there a lot of love stories? <laughs> my heavens, and I love the book. Fifty cents a book. And mysteries. Stephen King. And a good mystery, if it's a good writer and he's got books published, you can't put the book down. You want to keep reading because they got your interest. And that's why God is a mystery. The Trinity is a mystery that we can't and don't want to explain thoroughly. Because once we could understand how God can be Father, Son, and Spirit, we would run the risk of losing interest. And we would put the book down. And that would be a big problem. It's good it's a mystery. Now, it's important to understand there are two types of mysteries. And those books reflect that. There are mysteries that confound us. And there are mysteries that astound us. And you know the difference. The mysteries that confound us are things that are just crazy. It's part of my job. People say, Father, explain to me why that child died in the accident. Why do bad things happen to good, holy people? Or also, why do good things happen to bad people? Why is it the person who never goes to church got that good fortune? Why does a, a kid at 25 years old take a gun and shoot three people and then shoot himself? Those things confound us. You scratch your head. And they often turn you away from God. Why does God let that happen? No, and those things are part of life. I can't explain them and I can't stop them. Nobody else can. Those are bad things. There are mysteries that astound us, and they are good things. Like if you really focus on the Trinity, if you want to go home and pray about today's readings, say, why would God be a creator? Why create us? All we ever do is disappoint him, every one of us. And why would he save us? Why would he send his son to die on the cross? But he did. And why would he send us the Holy Spirit to be with us forever in this thing we call the church, imperfect though it may be? That's an astounding mystery that draws us to reflect more deeply on God. Instead of saying, I can't believe in God because the kid died or that kid shot three people. The mysteries that astound us draw us into God's life. And if we do do that, then we can penetrate more deeply those mysteries that confound us. And we begin to get the insights necessary to explain the shooting in Tunkhannock. Excuse, if not explain. That God loves us enough to let us have the freedom to do what we want. That's where, that's where bad things come. God lets us be free. And we sometimes, oftentimes, choose the wrong path. But he loves us enough to, to let us make mistakes, even turn our backs on him. He could make us love him, but he loves us enough not to do that. See, if you understand the love from the mysteries that astound, then you can begin to dig into the mysteries that confound. See how that has to work? That's where prayer comes in. Praying on the one mystery begins to help us understand the second. See, there are other books that need to be taken over to the
the gym. But they're not written yet. Because it's the mystery of how God is working in your life. The story of your life. And every one of us has a story. And if we penetrate, how has God been working in my life today? Where's the mystery? That, that's a novel. Because you're a novel. There's only one of you. Only one of me. And God's working in everybody. And it might be a bestseller. Not over in the gym. But it might be in a bookstore somewhere saying, look how God has worked in this person's life. And spiritual life is for us to figure out where he worked in my life today and tonight. You can't buy that in the gym, at a block party, or at a library. It's got to be in here. How God's working in your life and mine too. That's not just a mystery, it's a story. It's love. Let us stand, my friends, we'll profess our faith in the